What is up everyone? Welcome to today's video. I'm Aaron from Rudy Visuals. And in today's video, we are gonna be reviewing this awesome zoom lens, the Tamron 28-75 f2.8 for Sony EMA. So I'll see you after that intro. So we purchased the Sony a7 III a couple of months ago and to be honest we didn't really have much of a budget left over to get some lenses with it. Ideally would have loved to have gotten like two or three prime lenses, a 24mm, a 50mm and maybe like an 85 However, as you probably know, G Master lenses, the high-end Sony lenses are super expensive and cost thousands of dollars. So as a kind of a, like a stop gap until we can like save up some money to get some prime lenses, we settled on this, which is the Tamron 28-275 f2.8, which is a very, very versatile, kind of like a jack of all trades uh, zoom lens that's gotten really, really good and positive reviews from a lot of reviewers out there. And we've pretty much been using this camera and this lens setup extensively over the last couple of months. Uh, out there in the real world. So we've gotten to know this lens, this combination pretty well. As always, this isn't gonna be like a super technical review, but this review is gonna come from our real world use of this. I'm using it extensively on a bunch of photo shoots, on portrait shoots in particular, some street photography, and we've also used it to film a bunch of videos for our YouTube channel as well. So is it any good? I guess we will find out. So let's go over the pros of the lens first, of which there are many. So the first pro is that it's very lightweight and it has quite good build quality. This lens comes in at only 550 grams and that weight does definitely make a big difference in terms of the actual build quality itself specifically. So it is made of plastics but the plastics are kind of like high quality plastics. If you've ever used something like a Nintendo Switch or like Nintendo products like the Switch Pro Controller, you know, it's, it's made of plastic, but it's that kind of like top shelf, high end feeling plastic. So it's not like chintzy cheap plastic. It, it feels pretty good. It feels quite solid. The actual focus rings and the zoom rings feel very nice and smooth. A little bit stiff, but stiff in a kind of like a precise kind of way. It also has a hydro, Phobic fluorine coating on the front lens, which is highly resistant to fingerprints, moisture, and like dust. Usually with our like Canon lenses, I find myself having to wipe away the lenses often because there are like fingerprint smudges on them, <coughs> Veronica, or kind of like gunk from like rain, raindrops or whatever. Uh, but with this lens, I don't find myself having to clean it as often. So you can see that resistant coating does make a difference. In terms of it being weather sealed, weather resistant, we have used this out in snow we've used it in like light drizzle and we have had zero issues with it we've used it outside in like minus five degrees and the lens never had any issues the camera itself never had any issues so well done Sony of course I would never recommend you to go out and use your camera and your lenses in heavy snow or a storm some people have had different experiences with, with their camera so take your precautions but in our experience in those light drizzles that light snow very very cold weather zero issues with this lens. Another pro of this lens is that versatile focal length. You've got that 28 millimeters all the way to 75. This makes it a really good option to cover a wide range of different photography styles and video. We find it super useful when we're doing portrait shoots. I found myself not really wanting to change lenses. I just sort of kept this one lens on here. And even though I had rented a few other different lenses for this camera so I could just focus more on the actual model and the pictures rather than like having to faff around with changing the lens. So in terms of having a sort of all-in-one solution, the Tamron 28-75 to definitely has you covered. Of course, one of the main attractions of this lens is that very fast aperture of f2.8. Particularly when you combine it with the longer focal lens, creates really, really nice background blur and bokeh. The lens itself has nine aperture blades, so you get very rounded, very creamy, cinematic looking backgrounds. In my opinion, the bokeh is not the smoothest bokeh I've ever seen. It can look a little bit crazy and a little bit busy, uh, but I think the bokeh definitely has some nice character. Now, clearly bokeh is kind of like a very subjective thing, but I quite like the fact that the bokeh on this lens looks quite unique. It's quite different from any of the lenses that I've, I've owned previously. Kind of reminds me of the bokeh on a vintage lens we have, a 50 mil, I think it's a Carl Zeiss Tesser. 
f2.8 as well it has very interesting looking bulkhead as well but it just makes the image look a little bit different a little bit unique so another amazing pro about this lens is the minimum focusing distance of just 19 centimeters when you're shooting at 28 millimeters and it goes up to a still very impressive 39 centimeters when you've got it on the longer end around 75 millimeters. This makes it actually very, very useful if you're into macro style photography. It's not a macro lens by any means, but the fact that you can get so close to your subjects does make it quite useful for taking close-ups of like flowers, maybe you're doing product photography, even if you're just trying to get nice and close to a model, maybe you're emphasizing like the eyes or something like that. Uh, the fact that you can get so close is super, super impressive. So next up, let's talk about the most important thing about the lens, which is the image quality. And you'll be very happy to know that I personally have found the image quality on this lens super sharp, razor sharp, very beautiful image quality. With a little bit of softness, sort of wide open on the edges of the images, but stopping down the aperture to about f4, f8 uh, does minimize the effect of this. But if you're shooting portraits, which is what we do like 90% of the time, corner sharpness issue at f2.8 isn't really that big of a deal because those areas are usually out of focus anyway. In terms of video footage, we've been really happy with the video quality coming out of the Tamron lens. Our video footage has come out looking very sharp, very clear and vivid. Now, I know a lot of this has to do more with the actual body itself, but in terms of the lens, that f2.8 aperture is getting you very, very nice cinematic background blur and also works very, very well in low light situations as well. And that flexible focal range also gives you really, really nice, easy options when you're filming in terms of getting wide angles, tights and mid shots as well without having to constantly chop and change the lens mid shoot. Okay, so next pro, I know there are a lot of them, is that this is a native E-mount lens. So it works perfectly well with the Sony a7 III and all of its multiple focusing modes, particularly using it with IAF. The lens features a new RXD stepping motor that allows for very quick and accurate autofocus. And it is actually near silent. You can hear it very, very, very slightly. It's super snappy, locks onto subjects really well and works great with Sony's face detect and its IAF as well. Okay, and my final pro for this lens is the price. In my opinion, I think that bang for your buck, this is probably the best value lens that you can get for the Sony a7 III, particularly if you're looking for a sort of all-in-one lens solution and you're not really keen on having multiple lenses. Put that into perspective, the Sony 24-70 f2.8, which is a thousand pounds more. So the fact that you can get this lens, which is a 28-75 to at f2.8, 2.8 at the price it's being sold for, the build quality you're getting and the image quality, I honestly think for the price, one of the best bang for your buck lenses you can get for Sony E-mount. All right, well, let's move on to some of the cons because there are a few cons. First of all, being the actual focal length. I know I said it's a very flexible focal length, but the fact that it's at 28 millimeters rather than 24, we did find ourselves on some occasions wanting to have that extra four millimeters. So there were some times where we wanted to shoot wide angle shots where I wanted to take like a little bit of a wider perspective, but I had no room to step back. So I did find myself missing that four millimeters every now and then. Whereas on the opposite end of the spectrum, going from 70 millimeters to 75, I didn't really find it was like a huge deal. So if you are someone who likes to shoot at wider angles, at 24 and wider, that's definitely something that could be a game changer for you. In terms of the image quality, again, there are some minor problems with this lens. First of all, being uh, the, the distortion. So it's particularly at the widest focal length, 28 millimeters, there is very noticeable distortion. So this is shot at 28 millimeters and you can see this line here at the top and also at the bottom here. That should be that, that should be straight, that should be completely straight. And there is a very noticeable curvature. So that distortion, particularly at the widest focal length, 20 millimeters is very noticeable. And I know this can be fixed by going into Lightroom and enabling profile corrections. So there is a, that improvement there, but straight out of the camera, there is that noticeable distortion. So something to be aware of. There is also some strong vignetting wide open. Again, this can also be fixed in post, but it is noticeable, particularly at f2.8 wide open. Another slightly annoying thing about this lens is the fact that the focus ring and the zoom ring are 
opposite. So usually it's the other way around. Pretty much all my other lenses are the other way around. I think most Sony lenses, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think other Sony lenses are the other way around as well. I'm not really sure why this was done. It could be the way they designed the lens to, to also cut costs or something, I'm not really sure. But I do often find myself doing this, thinking that that's the focus and that's the zoom and I just keep getting them mixed up. And pretty much every shoot I, I have, I still haven't gotten used to that. Um, so it can be a little bit annoying. There's also no physical switches on the lenses. I like having like the manual focus uh, and AF kind of a switch just to turn it on and off. I also like lenses when they have the IS switch, so it's just very easy to turn it on and off. Not a huge problem, but it's just something that sometimes annoys me a tiny little bit. And the final con is that there is actually no IS in the lens itself. So if you are shooting on an A7 III, which has really, really good IS built in into the camera, not a problem, not a problem for us. If you're using it on a Sony body that doesn't have IS, then you're not gonna have any IS. So those are the cons, but most of those cons are pretty minor. I guess the most like game-changing one is if you are someone who likes to shoot wide, you may find yourself missing that four millimeters. Well, let's get to the summary. As I'm reading out the summary, I'm gonna also throw over some photos that I've taken with this lens. The Tamron feels more like a prosumer level lens, but it's priced fantastically well. Uh, it's really uncomplicated, it's versatile, produces very sharp and vivid images, and can pretty much do anything you throw at it very well. And the value you're getting, the price performance, for me, makes it one of the best zoom lenses for Sony E-mount cameras, especially if you're someone who likes to keep things simple. So I would wholeheartedly recommend you not getting the kit lens that comes with the a7 III and going for the Tamron 28-75 f2.8. Trust me, you definitely won't be disappointed with this lens. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about the Tamron, the a7 III or anything in general, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. If you dislike this video, well hit that button, but if you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Always love hearing from you guys on Facebook and Instagram, so make sure you give us a follow. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you on the next video, all right?